Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending upon wherever and whenever you are when you're watching this. Welcome to Multitude Hub. My name is Jazib Ali, and I'm going to be your host today. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, one of the hottest topics in international politics today is the Ukrainian Russian conflict. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine has always existed ever since Ukrainian independence. However, recently, on the 24th of February, Russian forces launched a military operation in Ukraine which has been perhaps one of the biggest developments in European politics since World War II. Following is some of the recent news in this Ukrainian and Russian conflict. The International Court of Justice, which is the biggest court of justice in the entire world, has called for Russia to immediately suspend all operations within Ukrainian territory. Personally, I find that statement very amusing because this is perhaps the first time or rather the first notable time when one of the world's quote-unquote superpowers has been snubbed by the United Nations. I'm all for this. I want the big guy to be snubbed. As well as the fact that any and all atrocities that have been committed by Russian forces within Ukraine need to have repercussions. They need to have consequences. But I cannot be the only one who sees the irony or rather hypocrisy in this situation. I will keep my own views for later. First, let's move on with the facts. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guerres, has praised this by saying that it was exactly what he's been asking for ever since the conflict began, back in February. The statement was issued by the President of the International Court of Justice, Madam Joanne E. Donag, a lawyer of American origin. She gave the following statement, Indeed, any military operation, one in particular of the size that had been carried out by the Russian Federation on the territory of Ukraine, inevitably causes loss of life mental and physical harm, damage to property and to the environment. Keep those facts in mind, we'll talk about them later. She also moved forward by saying that the civilian population was directly affected by this invasion and that they were vulnerable. Keep that in mind as well. Let me give you some facts about the causes of this war on the civilian population. As of this morning, there have been 1900 civilian casualties in Ukraine, of which 750 have been directly at the hands of Russian forces, of which 52 have been children. These facts are revolting and Russian forces need to be made accountable for them. That is why I am all for the actions of the United Nations. However, I am forced to ask, where were these actions when another quote-unquote superpower launched similar actions against other nations? Let me give you some other facts, ladies and gentlemen. 20,000 to 55,000. This is the number of individuals that were killed directly by US bombings in Iraq and Syria. 200,000. That is the number of Iraqi civilians killed as a result of direct actions of the United States in Iraq. Millions were displaced. Millions of lives destroyed. Before moving forward, let me give you some other facts. 240,000. That is the number of Afghan civilians killed at the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan as a result of both Russian and US invasion. Where was the United Nations when these civilians were being killed? Where was the loss of life? Where were all of the quote-unquote reasons given behind the United Nations asking Russia to suspend all operations? Once again, I am entirely for the United Nations finally taking some action. But I must ask, why was this action not taken before? Now, I must admit that you, as a Pakistani, because of course this video is meant for the Pakistani audience, must be wondering, what do I have to do with the russia ukrainian conflict? I'm a Pakistani. I have my own problems to worry about. And yes, you do have your own problems to worry about. Unfortunately, Pakistan will always have its own problems to worry about. But we cannot afford to ignore what's going on in the world. The russia ukrainian conflict is going to have a massive effect on international politics and we as pakistan as a major stakeholder in the world must have a say in this matter we must form our own opinion because trust me our stance on this issue is going to cause a lot of problems for us and it already has we all know that what imran khan's ill-timed visit to russia has done for his political career we can see what's happening now, I must also say this, I'm not a political analyst, I'm not uh, a journalist, I'm not qualified to say any of the things which I am saying. They are simply the opinion of 
a person who observes what's happening around them. So I urge you, research this. Go to Google. Type in Russia Ukraine conflict. Read some articles. <laughs> Heck, watch YouTube videos. And if you find opinions that contradict mine, you are more than welcome to come into the comments and share them with me and I would love to reply to them. Because the main purpose of this video and further videos which will be uploaded in a similar format is to encourage you to yourself engage with international politics or international affairs. Because one thing that I've noticed is that Pakistani, the Pakistani audience in general does not care about international politics. Again, we have our own problems to worry about. But at the end of the day, this is our world. Being a Pakistani or staying within the bounds of Pakistan is only going to damage us. Once again, I am Jazib Ali and I will return next week perhaps with another international topic. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.